Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 8 in how to program in C Sharp. In today's video we're going to have a look at methods. This is mostly going to be just an introduction to what can we do with methods and how do we write them out. Uh, but of course we might have a more in-depth look later. So uh, what are methods? Well, for the beginner, methods are basically a way to group together code to make it much easier to read. But once you start getting a bit more advanced using parameters and return types, uh, methods are really, uh, really, really useful for doing all kinds of, of, uh, of things such as reusing code, uh, organizing code, and, um, and uh, really making your code more flexible. So methods are also commonly known as functions in C Sharp and that's because it's an object-oriented programming language so those two terms are interchangeable. In other languages they might not mean exactly the same. Gen generally you can say that a method will always be a function. A function won't always be a method though. But in C Sharp it will. So, before we get started today, uh, I just quickly want to mention that I, uh, if you are a Rapid Unity user, I've uh, created an extension for Unity uh, called UPA Toolkit, where you can make pixel art inside of Unity itself. If you don't know, Unity is an awesome game engine, which I have plenty of tutorials on. And I've just released a new version, uh, where, uh, which introduces a layer system, so you can get that on the Asset Store. Just wanted to do a quick plug there. <laughs> cool, so let's open up our Xamarin Studio project. I'm going to zoom in on the code here. By the way, I've been getting quite a few questions as to why I'm using Xamarin Studio. Trust me, it's not really something that I enjoy very much. I don't think that Xamarin Studio is the best IDE out there by any means. But it's very accessible, it's very easy to use. And it's available for both PC and Mac, which was a requirement for this tutorial. If you're using a PC or Windows computer, I definitely recommend that you check out um, Visual Studio instead. That's Microsoft's own IDE. And if you're using Mac, uh, you have something called Xcode available, which is also really, really good. But if you want everything to look exactly like I have it here, trust me, for the things we're going to be doing, Xamarin Studio is fine. Cool, so let's dig right into it. As you can see here, whenever we start up with a project, we have a function here, or method, called main. And we've just ignored this until now, except for this comment here that says it's a method called main, and it's called when the program starts. Because pretty much any kind of application has what is called an entry function. And this is basic, basically a method that is called whenever the program starts. And this is where you start calling other functions and your whole program begins. Because it would be a really boring program if nothing happened when it started. So that's basically what this is. When you're doing C sharp, the main function is the start function. And then from here we can do some code. And in here we've written all kinds of code. We've done while loops and for loops. But what uh, if we have this uh, larger application, let's say we want to have an application that does multiple things. Well, instead of writing everything out and just continuing on and on and on in the main function, we can split this up into different methods. So, for example, if we wanted to agree the user, we could have a method that does this. So let's create one now. So under the uh, the public static void main, we're going to type another method down here. Make sure that it's inside of the same class and of course inside of the same namespace. So just under here, we're going to type public, just use the same syntax as you see up here, static void. And this for now is what we're going to type in front of every function. Then you're going to type in the name and we're going to maybe uh, type in greed user. And then what you want to do, and you want to have this for any method uh, of any kind, uh, you want to have an open and close parentheses. And you notice that in here we have uh, what is called an argument. We are not going to have that uh, yet. We're going to look at that later. And then we're going to open and close some brackets. I'm just going to bump this down here to make it more readable. 
And then in here, we can write some code. For example, we could say console.write line, and we're going to type in hello world, like this. And uh, then what we do up here is we can call this method. So this is basically how we define a method. Uh, this is a method definition. And this up here is going to be a method call. So we're going to type in greet user. We're going to put in the parentheses and we're going to end with a semicolon. You might see that this looks very familiar to console.read key where we do exactly the same. The reason why is that console.read key, as with pretty much anything we've do been doing until now, is a method. The same is console.write line, that has an argument, and, and so on. So there, uh, programming is really just calling and defining a bunch of methods in order to do different stuff. So now when we run this program, it's going to start out an out entry function, which is the main function. It's going to call the greed user function. So it's going to go down here and it's going to write out hello world. Then when it's done with that, it's going to go back here and it's going to print out console.re uh, or it's going to wait for an input. So let's try and hit play. You can see it opens up a console window. Hello world is printed and when we type something, it closes. So that's a, a, the most basic use form for a, a method. And what's cool about this is that we can have different methods. We can have them call each other. Let's say we could maybe uh, call another method here that would maybe do, uh, let's say if we wanted to, after greeting the user, we could maybe say wait for user input and we could have that as a function. Or we could have it up here wait for some user input, then we could maybe uh, process input and then we could maybe print output. So this is what many uh, simple programs look like. It's just uh, these different groupings of functionality into functions that we then call in a specific order. So um, the cool thing about this is that it's not only use, used to group together functionality. It's also used um, pretty much as a utility of some sort. I like to think of methods as a machine, where uh, you tell the machine that it needs to do something, and then it does so. But the machine can get more advanced. You can also give the machine some kind of input, and then it does something with that input. And if the machine is really awesome, it will also give you an output back. So let's have a look at the, um, the first instance here where we just say that the machine should do something and it does. That's what we have here. The second instance is where we give some, the machine some input that it then does something with. So let's try writing one of those methods. So I'm going to delete this here and delete this here. So again, we start with public static void. We call this maybe add. Let's say we want to add two, um, uh, two numbers together and then print out the result. So we open and close the parentheses and we put, uh, we open and close some brackets here. And in here we can then add together some numbers. But let's say that up here in the main function, we know which numbers we should add. When, well, then we need to some way of calling the method, but also giving it some numbers that it should add together. This is where arguments come in. So arguments or parameters, if you will, are a way of passing input into a method from the place that it's called. So if we say that we want to add together two integers, we can type in here int, int num1, this looks very much like a variable dec declaration, and really it is, comma, to do another one, int num2. Now we know that this method wants to have passed in two numbers separ separated by a comma. So up here we can now write maybe 4 and 8, and you can see that it wants here an input of first num1 
and then num2 and both of type integer. So this is the way that we pass input to the function. And then inside of the method itself, we can then do num1 plus num2. And we can maybe just print this out. So we can do console dot write line num1 plus num2. Let's try this out. So hit play. You can see it writes out the number 12. And we can of course give it any two numbers that we would like up here. 10 and 8, and that's going to write out 18, and so on. What you can also do is have multiple different methods with the same name, but with different, different arguments. So let's say that we have another method called add that doesn't take in just two arguments, but takes in a third one too, num3 here. And we're going to add num3 down here too. And uh, then up here, we can first add together 10 and 8. And then we can maybe also add together 10, 8, and um, 2. And we can see that it just automatically knows that this should call the method here. And this should call the method down here. So let's try this out again. Hit play and it, it shows the numbers 18 and 20. <clears throat> Great, great. So that was the second instance. If we want to give our method some kind of input, I'm just going to delete the second method there and the method here. But I'm going to keep the add method. Because let's say that we don't want to just print out the numbers, but we want to use the result of the calculation up here. So we can use it for all different kind of stuff. Maybe checking if it's larger than some value maybe printing it out, maybe using it for a further calculation, just as part of, of, of some calculation. Uh, we can do all kinds of stuff up here if we have some way of retrieving the result from the method. So in order to do this, instead of writing out uh, the result here, we use what is called a return type. And uh, the way you do this, is instead of writing public static void, we write something else right here. Because what void actually means is return nothing. That's what we type when we don't want the method to go back and insert anything here, when we just want it to do something here with the input that it's given. But if we wanted to give something back, we can type that uh, we, we, we write here the type that we want to give back. In this case, we want to give back an integer number, so we write int here. Then what we can do is instead of writing console.writeLine and then adding the numbers together, we simply write return followed by what we want to return. So we write num1 plus num2. So now what this method does is it when it is called it's going to take in two numbers, it's going to add them together, and it's going to give back the result. It's going to return an integer value that we can yet then use up here. So what we do up here in order to use this value, and uh, right now we are simply going to write out the result. So we're going to say console.writeLine, and then in here we can use this basically as any other variable we can simply go like this or maybe we could store it in a in a variable here called result so we're going to type int result equals add like this so now we can simply say that different variables should equal the result of this calculation because we are returning a number and then in here we could write out the result so this makes our code much more flexible, it makes the method here much more reusable, and um, it just looks very cool. So now when we hit play, you can see that as before it writes out the number 18, but now we're able to do much more with this. For example, we could check um, if result uh, is uh, greater than 10, then we want to uh, console dot right line result is larger than 10 and if it's not else console dot right line result 
is smaller than or equal to, oops, to 10. So, and by the way, this is just shorthand notation. I'm just leaving out the uh, brackets here. I'm just going to put them in to make it a bit easier for you to follow. I'm just way too used to not, not typing them. When you only need one single line of code, you can just leave them out. But it is generally better practice to, to get them in there because sometimes you just want to add something uh, to them there and then, um, then you're going to put them in anyway. So like this. So now you can see that when we are getting the value back like this, we can do different stuff with it such as checking the result is what we're doing here. So um, if, we, uh, if we play now, we should see that the result is larger than 10. And indeed we do. And if we maybe type in uh, 1 and 8, it's going to say the result is smaller than or equal to 10. So that was this introduction to methods. With this, you're going to be able to write the majority of methods that you're going to write in your programming career. Uh, if you understand return types already, that's really great. A lot of people have a hard time understanding exactly what that does. If you don't, well, then you are probably part of the majority. And for now, you can just type after me. But it's good to just know that it exists and that uh, don't worry, you will master it. I sure was very confused um, about this when I, I started. So great. Thank you for watching the whole way through this video. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.